Now, anywhere I read that there's information about Tears of the Kingdom or the future of the Zelda franchise, I always take it with a grain of salt because rumors are the lamest things out there, especially in the video game world. But when the director and the producer of Tears of the Kingdom decide to do an interview with Game Informer and tell the landscape and roadmap for Tears of the Kingdom, as well as what the future holds for the franchise, I'm gonna be honest, that excites me because those are some words I can trust, but not when I'm decaffeinated. So, uh, well, you guys know what's next. Now, aside from just getting some of the formalities out of the way, they of course asked, how do you feel about the game? And the producer, as well as the director, of course, were proud of it, proud of what they did and expressed that they are excited for the age range. While Zelda as a franchise has been around for a long time and there's a very long lasting fan base, myself being one of them, I mean, look at these books. I got this incredible creating a champion. This book right here is by Dark Horse Books. I mean, all these big ones are, I mean, this is the encyclopedia. This encyclopedia is actually a special edition one that looks like the original cartridge of the original Zelda. I love the Zelda franchise. I've been involved with playing their games since I was very little. One of my first ever was Link's Awakening, still one of my favorite games of all time. But actually, real quick, I have to show you guys this because this little compartment right here resembles that of a, uh, a shrine. And if I can just get this open, then you will see that it says, May the Goddess Smile Upon You. So mind you, this is Breath of the Wild. This is not Tears of the Kingdom. But if I reach in here, what does the Goddess Smile Upon You and grant you? One of these guys an orb it is an orb how cool is that special edition stuff all about it anyway they acknowledged that the zelda franchise has a fan base people like me in my 30s and they said that they were excited to see that tears of the kingdom brought more people on the older range as well as the younger range and so they were excited to see how that opened it up for the future of the franchise because the fan base is increasing now, they then uh, the interviewers then went on to ask about Ultra Hand and will we be seeing Ultra Hand in future games? Which I thought was a really really good question because Ultra Hand is a mechanic that is wild. It seems like everyone nowadays is getting into this build your own adventure type of situation. And by adventure, I just mean like you can build stuff. Fortnite just dropped Lego adventure stuff, which is awesome by the way. I'm enjoying that, but. That was a really good question, I believe, because it led them to the very thing that I was wondering, which was, is Ultra Hand kind of it? Is this what we're seeing? And they said, no, Ultra Hand is something that we're probably not gonna see elsewhere because we wanted to build something that was special and very complete. And on that same note, Ultra Hand and all of the stuff that you're experiencing in Tears of the Kingdom, is all you will be experiencing in Tears of the Kingdom. There's no DLC planned for this game. We tried to make it the most complete Zelda game we could create. And while I feel like Tears of the Kingdom at times feels like it's just additional stuff in Breath of the Wild, which it is, they acknowledge the fact that this was a sequel. I'm very happy to hear that the game that they released is all of it. Because good Lord Almighty, is there a ton Ooh, water's ready. Not for coffee. The question I thought was pretty interesting was a follow-up to the DLC one, which was, well, will there be a sequel? And I thought that the answer was one of the most exciting things, and that's what got me making this video, honestly, to share with you guys what they said. And that's essentially, well, that would be a sequel to a sequel, and that seems kind of odd, doesn't it? They said what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear that there wasn't a sequel to Tears of the Kingdom. Now, when it first came out and I played it, I admittedly was like, oh, I don't understand how they're gonna do anything other than this because this is just the new style. There's no way they can break this. But as I played more and more, I realized, okay, while this is great and it's fun in its own right, and I do enjoy it, I do like Tears of the Kingdom. It just didn't have the, the gravity that Breath of the Wild did because Breath of the Wild came at a time in my life where I could play more of it, first off, but second, it was such a surprise. There was no anticipation for this game. We didn't expect it until they announced it, and then once they announced it, we had for sure expected it, but after playing Breath of the Wild, we expected a sequel. We expected the next game of the franchise, and there was no deviation. And so when they say, no, there's not gonna be a sequel to a sequel, it led me down 
a mind trail, which is, well, then what is the next game going to look like? Is it going to be similar? Can they break this format? And, well, once my coffee finishes and then I get to sit down and drink it, that's what we're going to talk about. All right, time to pour on some coffee. With Grizz at my feet, Henry behind me, and Larry lighting the way, let's dive into the very subject of what does the future of Zelda look like? There's plenty of questions that they ask more about like Ocarina of Time and fan theories. And if they played into that, did they actually create this story with the theories in mind? Did they take history from, there's, there's a book up there called the Hyrule Hysteria. Hysteria? Historia? Historia? It has everything. Absolutely everything. All the history. It's super cool. I mean, it's missing Breath of the Wild, of course, and Taunt K, but it still has all of that, which is really exciting to, uh, to have. I love those books. At any rate, did they take that into consideration when creating this and the, all the different theories with Ocarina of Time and stuff like that? And they said to a certain extent uh, that lore is important and fan theories do exist. But not everything is taken into consideration. Of course, they are trying to stick within a world that exists, but Zelda and the Legend of Zelda, rather, and Link, Zelda, all these different characters are um, products of reincarnation. So though there is lore that is existing, it's kind of a fresh start every time they approach the franchise. And so when looking to the future, oh, heck yeah, you're a good chef. You're doing me right. When looking to the future of Zelda, you know, the question is always, now with Tatke and Breath of the Wild, are we just going to see more of the same? Because it works. It's good. And for me, the excitement again hit me when they said, you know, this is kind of the end of this style of story, right? Now, will it still be similar open world-esque? They didn't answer that directly, but they did make it known that they have no intention of carrying on this specific story and that Tears of the Kingdom did bookend it, so to speak. Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, two games of which you can spend hundreds and hundreds of hours in, and all of the time and development that went into that is something that they have said to be complete. And what's cool is the more they talked about it, the more they reaffirmed the fact that this franchise, Zelda, as well as Mario, are two franchises that are really important and legacy franchises. They've been around for a very long time and they deserve a specific level of care. They mentioned Animal Crossing and some of the, and Splatoon, some of the newer ones, younger franchises that you can get more experimental with. And while Tears of the Kingdom certainly got experimental, um, I think that they, they played it close and safe with some of the things that they did, right? Giving us a sequel that was pretty much in the exact same spot except a little bit more weathered with some interesting mechanics. And so when they discussed what the future of Zelda looks like, they said something that I appreciated, which was they're approaching it with a lot of respect. Now, as a lifelong Star Wars fan, I wish that they would have taken the same approach because respect for a franchise and respect for a long lasting history. And by history, I mean, if I'm just showing you this right now, the Hyrule Historia, I'm just going to crack open to a random page. I mean, we got the trial of the Triforce right here. It is beautiful artwork every which way. I mean, the concept art of Ganon and all these different fun things. I mean, this is incredible. Dark Horse really outdid themselves and I've paid so much money for these books. They're so expensive. Well, they're not like tremendously expensive. I think they're between 40 and 60 bucks depending on when you buy them and if you got a special edition. But these books, those are my Zelda books. The, eight, the bitmap books we'll talk about some other time. But with respect for the franchise, they really are leaning into the fact that they understand that there is lore, tremendous amount of lore, and there's a lot going on here. And so looking to the future of Zelda, I'm very, very excited to see that not only is there going to be something that's happening with new technologies, they say that technology does have an effect on how they're able to innovate and how they're able to push forward, which makes sense because Nintendo's kind of always been that way. They've always been like, well, what kind of crazy system can we create? And now that we have that crazy system, like the Wii or something like that, or even the Switch, how can we incorporate some of these new mechanics into the game itself? I mean, with the Wii and Skyward Sword, we had all of the battle mechanics being motion controlled. Let that sink in for a second. Did you ever think you'd be playing a game, a Zelda game, back when you were playing Ocarina of Time, where you were playing it on this sucker? really really inaccurate way of moving across different areas and now you have a brick in your hand called a Wiimote 
in a nunchuck and you're just swinging till your heart gives in, gives out. Like pretty cool stuff. So the future of Zelda is hopefully going to be something that we see on new hardware. I'd be really surprised if it wasn't on new hardware. But what I liked is the two confirmed things. One, this is a complete game. No DLC necessary. You have what you have. And so for you who are looking to pick up Tears of the Kingdom, 70 bucks gets you in the door. It's kind of expensive, but it's a great game. Often find it on sale or you can buy it with the vouchers, which I highly recommend picking up two of these vouchers. These are fake. I made them myself for a thumbnail. And actually, I have a video about vouchers. If you want to learn more about what you should buy with game vouchers, you can click this video right here. If you like Nintendo stuff, you're in the right spot. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to finish that coffee, third cup of coffee, because my kid didn't sleep last night. So I'm on caffeine overdrive. Most of all, happy gaming.